Okay, so we are going to talk about the simulation embedded in this lesson today, thermochemistry lesson two. Um, and the first part of that is hopefully you've already got your bell ringer done. And then reviewing exothermic and endothermic. If we think about the notes that we had last week. So here's the notes that we had last time. We had, we talked about thermochemistry. We talked about thermometer, thermostat. Um, energy, how do we get energy through food? We discussed glucose, it breaks down. These bonds hold energy, and when they're broken, energy is released. And then exothermic and endothermic, that was the last part of what we talked about last time. So an exothermic reaction, energy is released. Like fire, it feels hot. The reactants have a higher energy than the products, so it feels hot. And endothermic energy is absorbed. So if energy is absorbed, which is the opposite of being released, exothermic feels hot. How does endothermic feel? It feels cold. So we're going to look at two examples in that simulation that you would probably everyday examples that you have probably experienced yourself um, through the lesson. So let's go ahead and look at that. This is one of those. Um, this is one of the things from CK12 that you might have already looked at. If you have, you are a rock star. If not, let's go ahead and go through it together. All right. So I apologize for that. It looks like the students in the classroom could pull it up on their screen. So hopefully, you can at home can pull it up on your screen too, if you would like to. But I'm going to go ahead and go through what we have. So how do hot packs and cold packs change temperature? How many of you have used a hot pack or a cold pack? before like are those hand warmers those things out you're outside and you put it in your pocket it keeps your hands warm same concept so let's look at how does it work if you play sports or are generally active you've probably gotten injured at some point so we know we use those for injuries that guy's face looks seriously in pain maybe you've sprained a muscle or were hit by a ball and had to apply heat or ice to help with the pain and the recovery okay so we got hot packs cold packs it isn't always easy to keep large amounts of ice around or a hot pack warm on a rainy or cold day Instant hot and cold packs remain at the surrounding temperature until you need them to become really hot or really cold. And you've seen those. You probably have them in your own first aid pack at home. The packet is filled with solid compound, usually a salt, and a small inner pouch of water. So inside that thing, this is what we got. To activate it, the pack is squeezed, which breaks open the inner water pouch, and the pack starts to change temperature. You guys have all done that. That's a common experience. Yikes, looks like someone was injured. Can you figure out how to make a hot pack or a cold pack for them? Okay, so the figuring out part, you don't really have to do. You just get it out and crush it. But this is what I wanted you to really see is what's going on inside that. This part of the packet is water. This part of the packet, like they said, is a solid salt. So... The first one is sodium chloride. That's actual ta that's actually table salt. We're going to look at the energy diagram, and we're also going to watch the temperature. Okay, so let's go ahead. It's starting out at 21 degrees Celsius. I broke open the water. Notice the solid dissolves. Okay, fills the whole packet. Now we get to 17 degrees Celsius. So it went from 21 to 17. So when you touch that, how does it feel? Cold, right? The temperature went down. So when we look at our energy diagram, we had, we started out with the reactants being lower and the products being higher. So when we look at our notes that we had, that matches. Our reactants were lower and our products were higher on energy. So it feels cold. So a cold pack has could have sodium chloride in it. So let's look at lithium chloride. Still a salt. The only difference is we have lithium instead of sodium. We're going to start at 21 degrees Celsius. What do you think? Is it going to be a cold pack or a hot pack? Let's find out. We break that now. 
We went from 21 degrees Celsius to 62 degrees Celsius. So that's going to feel a lot warmer. We look at our graph. Our reactants have a higher energy than our products. So energy was released. So that means the lithium chloride was an exothermic reaction. All right, so let's go to the next one. Sodium hydroxide. We still have a solid. We still have water. We started at 21 degrees Celsius. Now we're at 74. Is this a hot pack or a cold pack? It's a hot pack. So it is exothermic. Our reactants have a higher energy than our products. We have energy that's released. It feels warm. Okay. And let's look at potassium chloride. Break the water. We had nine degrees Celsius. So this is a cold pack. Our reactants have a very low energy. Our products have a much higher energy. Energy was absorbed in that. So it feels cold to the touch. It feels cold to the touch. So that is an endothermic reaction. All right, so I really wanted you to see this in a real life example in these hot and cold packs because this is what you do if you get an injury, you actually grab one of these things and this is the chemistry that we're talking about. So that, that was the reason I wanted to show that to you. And then we could go back to that, but there's other things that you could look at on CK12. So kind of thinking through that example, make sure that you are remembering whenever there's that chemical reaction, the bonds are broken apart Okay. Well, our energy changes when those bonds are broken and new bonds are formed or we have ions, aqueous ions, then we're going to have a different energy in our products. And that's thermochemistry. That's what we're trying to look at. 